Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today I will be looking at this lens. It's a Leica lens that I bought for the incredibly cheap sum of £50. It's the Elmar 90mm f4. So it's a fairly slowish old lens. Uh, it's a long lens. Uh, it's got inherent sharpness because of that fairly slow aperture but it's also got some nice blur as well. It shoots at 90 millimeters of course on full frame, gives a focal length of 90 millimeters on full frame. If you shoot on APS-C it will give about 120 millimeter equivalent and if you shoot it on micro four thirds it will give a very long 180 millimeter full frame equivalent. A very very nice little lens and a lens I was very surprised to be able to bag for that price as well. This must be the cheapest Leica lens that you can buy. It's a fairly slow old lens and it's not the most popular Leica lens and it usually goes for around about a hundred pounds in good condition. This one in the advert was said to have just a tiny little bit of haze. I think it does have a little bit of haze but we'll come on to that shortly when we look at how it shoots. Now I'm going to be comparing the Leica lens to its FSU equivalent or more or less equivalent. It's another f4 lens. It's slightly longer at 135 millimeters. It's the Jupiter 11, but it is a very similar lens apart from that longer focal length. So we're going to be testing them, reviewing them, comparing them side by side and see how they stack up against each other. The Jupiter was long considered the poor relation of the Leica lens. It was long considered not to be as good a lens, to have less good image quality, to have less good uh, background blur and to be a bit less sharp. Well, we're going to see if that's true. We're going to compare the two and see how they stack up against each other. As I say, this lens was the poor relation of the Leica for many years and not long ago, 10 years ago, probably even five years ago, you could find good copies of this lens for 10 or 20 pounds. But prices are increasing recently. The prices of everything seem to be increasing recently and vintage lenses are not excluded from those rises, unfortunately. And I've seen these lenses go for, or at least, um, I've seen them priced at around about 50 to 60 pounds. So the gap between the price gap between the Leica and the Jupiter is narrowing. So, you know, really, you've got to ask yourself which one makes the most economic sense. Is it a, a Sonar copy from the former Soviet Union or is it the real deal, uh, the Leica lens uh, itself? So I bought this lens recently, as I say, for 50 pounds. Let's just take it off the camera. And I was told that it did have some very light haze inside it. And looking at the lens through the light, through, uh, you know, again, strong light, that does seem to be true. It does have, uh, seem to have some very slight haze in it. It doesn't too much affect the way it shoots, I was very pleased to find out. I may try and clean this lens, I'm not sure. I'm not a lens technician, so I don't really know what I'm doing and I can only really tackle the very simplest of repairs, but I may try and clean it. Apparently it's reasonably, relatively easy to do, but if not, I'll just keep it or maybe pass it on to somebody who can clean it. It's a beautiful thing and it deserves to be saved and used, I think. A very lovely thing indeed. So this is a beautifully made lens and this one is in really nice condition actually. It doesn't seem to have any marks on it at all. We'll have a closer look in a moment but pretty much, certainly in terms of appearance, it's probably not 
very different to when it left the factory all those years ago. It's a beautifully made precision instrument. There's no play or slop in the, for example, the focus ring has no slop. The aperture ring has no slop or play. Everything's really tight and beautifully made and there's a real feeling of precision with this lens. It was made for the Barnack rangefinders of which this is one and I've got the uh, optional extra viewfinder on here because whenever you use a, a lens that's not a 50mm focal length on one of these Barnack rangefinders you need an extra viewfinder because the built-in one is only 50 millimeters so if I were to use this on film I would need to use this extra viewfinder but this is what it was made for and it, it's I mean it's not a small lens but when you put it on the camera it's not so huge a package it's a a fairly long sticky out sort of lens but I reckon it's you know it sits on the camera pretty nicely so let's have a closer look then at this lens so there are our Leica camera and lens combination and my goodness I think they look pretty good and also I think this finder looks pretty good as well this is the uh, KMZ one the Russian one and uh, it's a good little finder uh, and it works really nicely on these Leica cameras and I think it's better than the Leica one actually. Let's take the lens off the camera and show it you a little more closely. L39 screw mount, it just screws off nice and easy. And there's the lens. And just look how nicely made this lens is. It's slightly dry, the lubrication in this one. It could do with a relube. And that's another thing that makes me think it's been sitting on a shelf in less than ideal conditions. But it's still pretty nice and smooth. Very, very carefully constructed. No play in any of those. Well, a slight bit of play in the aperture ring. Everything turns nicely and cleanly and smoothly. And it's a very, very nicely engineered lens. There's the front element and you can just see I think the coatings on there I think this is a multi-coated lens this is one from the later years of production don't know if you can see the rear element there but I think that's coated as well uh, so a very very nicely constructed lens a very nicely made lens and a very nicely feeling lens in the hands and it's got that magic word there Elmar on the face plate that's nice to see and this really was an incredible find for 50 pounds and even at 100 pounds or thereabouts these lenses are pretty good value especially if you particularly want to use a Leica lens you're curious about Leica lenses this is a very good way into trying out your first so it's beautifully made but how does it shoot well really nicely actually it's a really sharp lens very very sharp indeed uh, in fact rarely have i seen a lens that will shoot so sharp wide open and i think that's partly due to its relatively slow aperture and it's also partly due to excellent optics. This is a top class, world class lens and I would expect it to be very sharp. I'd be quite surprised if it wasn't. This really is a very sharp lens. It records loads of detail and it easily beats slower lenses, in, uh, faster lenses rather in sharpness, certainly when shooting wide open quite surprising that that you would get sharpness of this kind from a lens this old that was a a reasonably surprising thing the other Leica lens i've got over here the Summitar, that's really not not so sharp wide open it is a little bit soft 
wide open. That's an f2 lens, but it is a similar age, a similar sort of vintage, and that doesn't shoot as sharp as this one does. Perhaps not surprising with that f4 aperture, but still, it's really nice that, you know, right out of the box, fully open your lens is going to shoot a really sharp image. Now, there's not too much blur with this lens. It is fairly slow at f4 after all, but there's enough to give some separation. So you get a very sharp uh, main image that you've focused on and this lovely soft blur in the background. And those two combine to give a really nice aesthetic. So the subject is very, very clearly defined. There's not a huge lot of blur, but what there is is really nice and really works to help that separation and make your image really stand out, make your subject stand out. And that's a real part of the lens's character. It's an integral part of the character of the lens and of the character of the images that it makes the way those two elements work together, the sharpness of the main image and the softness of that background give a nice vintage look and it is a fairly unique vintage type look because there isn't a great deal of blur what there is is very very soft the main image is very sharp that's an image that you know is kind of defined as sort of pre-war late post-war aesthetic that's the aesthetic that's the kind of image you'd be getting from images at that time um, shot on long lenses so it really does define the lenses character and you don't get that character from too many other lenses at least in in my opinion it is a fairly unique character that this lens has the blur is always soft and I can't find any harsh spots and that's very unusual there are usually some harsh spots somewhere in the range of subject background camera distances and their relationships but in this one I couldn't find any at all it's smooth throughout and that is a really nice thing and a very very unusual thing and although it's fairly minimal this I think is some of the nicest blur that I've ever seen it really is lovely although there's not a great deal of it color is really nice it gives coolish tones. I think it's a coolish sort of lens, but it does give strong saturation, very strong color saturation with a very pleasing intensity and a vividness. And I think the color palette is unique to this lens as well. It's very delicate and very subtle. Check these images out and you'll see what I mean. I think this color palette is pretty much unique to this lens it's very beautiful indeed contrast can drop in sunlight and strong sunlight and I think that effect is more exaggerated in this particular lens because it does have a little haze in it but you know even with a clean one even with an absolutely perfectly clean one this is a 30s 40s 50s lens so it's not going, going to do particularly well in strong sunlight and most likely contrast will drop in strong sunlight even if you're using a very clean lens but yeah very nice color and pretty nice contrast too there is a bit of vignetting there is a bit of darkening of the corners but it's not too bad i mean the aperture is fairly slow we're already fairly well closed down at f4 wider lenses yeah 3.5 2.8 f2 yeah you're going to get some vignetting on a lens as long as this but f4 there really isn't much at all there's a little bit but that can be quite nice and altogether i'm really pleased with this lens it's cheap it's light it makes great images and it's another addition to my leica lens collection which now makes two so that's a great thing but how will the Jupiter 11 compare? Well, now let's have a look. So this is a very similar lens made for a very 
similar system. It was made for the former Soviet Union L-39 rangefinders, of which there are many. This is only one. This is the smallest one, the Zorki 1. There was also a Fed one, which was exactly the same. And this camera is an identical copy of the Barnack Leica here. It's pretty much identical in every detail, uh, with a few um, economies uh, introduced for, um, you know, mass production, production in very, very large numbers. But to all intents and purposes, this is a Leica 2. So, yeah, it was made for the FSU rangefinder systems. They were all copies of the Leica 2. They're all L39 and they're all pretty much the pre-war photography experience. Zorki 1, Zorki 2, Fed 2, Fed 3, Fed 4, Zorki 2, Zorki 4, Zorki 4K. There's loads and loads and loads of them. Let's take the lens off the camera and we'll find that this one has a similar weight to the Leica lens, although this is a longer lens and it is a larger lens. This has an aluminium body, whereas the Leica body is, I'm pretty sure, made of steel. Um, this is aluminium for lightness and it works perfectly fine. There's no problem with it. It's not quite as nicely made, but it, you know, it's still a nice thing. So let's have a closer look at this lens before we go any further. And here is the Jupiter 11, and it's a very nice piece of work. It's got this lovely chrome finish. I think this is actually chrome plate and not polished aluminium because there's a couple of points where it's come off this lens. Look, So I think this is actually chrome plated or maybe it's even nickel plated. I'm not sure that it's chrome even, but I think it's got some plate on it over the aluminium. The focus ring is in the center, the same as the Leica lens. This one needs relubing also. There's a bit more play on the controls here. You can hear a, probably hear a little click there with the play on the focus ring. And the play on the aperture ring is actually quite considerable, but that doesn't matter. These lenses have stood the test of time. They're slightly more cheap and cheerful than the Leica lenses, but you know, they're, they're just as good at what they do. And there's certainly no benefit derived automatically just from the Leica nameplate. It's got a nice big front element and importantly this lens has the purple coatings that were the best in all of the FSU lenses. If you see an FSU lens with purple coatings buy it because they were absolutely the best. The coatings got less good afterwards and I'm glad to say this has it. I'm pretty sure it's multi-coated lens though it's hard to tell I don't know if we can catch the light there and see maybe it's not actually maybe it's just a front coated lens this one but there we are L39 screw mount on the back there just the ordinary L39 thread mount rangefinder cam that moves in and out to move the cam to focus the rangefinder inside the camera so a really nice lens in its own right. Well, now what's this lens like to shoot? Well, it's actually very similar to the Leica with one or two differences. I would say that it has absolutely identical sharpness. I don't think it gives anything away in the sharpness stakes and I think they're absolutely equal and even. I can't see any difference at all in the sharpness between these two lenses shot fully open. It gives very sharp images with separation in a similar way to the 90mm Leica lens. This is a bit longer at 135mm so it will give slightly more background blur or you know, appreciably more background blur, but because it's a fairly slow f4 lens, again, you don't get a huge amount of blur, and actually, the blur ends up fairly comparable, at least in its quantity. But in its quality, however, it's a little bit harsher. This is a sonar design. This this uh, Jupiter is a sonar design, as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure what the Leica's optical formula is, but it's likely to be different because 
the blur is different. Um, how can I explain? It will give harsh spots. It's not quite as beautiful and soft overall. And sometimes it gets quite busy and lively and almost distracting. I don't think it gets to the point where it actually becomes distracting, but it is just that little bit harsher and it does give images with a different feel. You might say they're more gritty and serious. They're less soft and less, I don't know, less lovely and delightful in some way, just a bit more gritty and serious. Not that the blur on this lens is bad, but the Leica blur is most certainly softer. Colour is that little bit warmer. It's not quite as cool a lens as the Leica was. And generally overall images seem stronger and that bit more substantial with that bit more, what can I say? Seriousness, um, depth, body. I think there may be a little more contrast in this lens and that might be because of the haze that's in the Leica lens or it might be just a difference in character, I'm not sure. But whatever the case, images from this lens end up feeling more business-like, more serious, more gritty, maybe more journalistic, I don't know. That might be a way to explain it more clearly. And again, this lens gives a little bit of vignetting, similar to the Leica, not very much. There's a little bit of darkening corners. Um, it disappears as you stop down, but there's not very much there anyway to begin with, so it's hardly worth it. And it can be a nice feature in a shot. I kind of like it, actually. So, well, which do I prefer of these lenses? Well, there really isn't much in it. They are very similar lenses. They've got equal sharpness. I do find the Leica colours that bit more pleasing, and I do prefer slightly the softer blur from the Leica. It just feels that bit nicer, more delicate, more welcoming. So personally, I prefer it. Both are lovely lenses and both will make some fantastic images. At about £100 for the Leica lens in uh, very good order and around about £50 for the Jupiter. Is it worth paying the extra? Probably not at the end of the day. Both are beautiful lenses and will make beautiful images. The Leica is exquisitely made though, and if you appreciate beautiful engineering, then, you know, go for the Leica lens, buy one. If you don't like it, you can sell it on. That's the great thing with these vintage lenses. You're never going to get stuck with them if you don't like them. The market's very good at the moment, so you can sell them on. Yeah, if you appreciate beautiful engineering, the Leica is the lens for you. And... I mean, it's the cheapest Leica lens there is. It's a hundred quid or so. You just can't go wrong. So that's it from me for today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. We're very nearly at 30,000 subs. Let's see if we can get to 30,000. That would be really cool. Thanks to everybody who has subscribed. Thanks to everyone who stayed with us for a long while, for all these years. People who've just joined recently. Many, many thanks for your support. It really is valued and it really is appreciated. Many, many thanks also go to patrons, patrons old, patrons new, patrons who've been, been with us for years and years, patrons who've just joined us and all points betwixt and between. Many, many thanks for your support. As I've said several times now, this channel couldn't do what it does without your support. So thank you so much for that. And if you like the content on this channel, why not consider becoming a patron yourself? You can do it over at patreon.com forward slash xenography and you can do it for as little as $1 per month. As ever, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more. 
Xenography.